I'm Charlie, and this is a tutorial for the Computer and Networking Security Courses Lab 8. This tutorial covers the remote portions of the lab. There are some extra pieces that you still need to do once the tutorial is over, but let's get started. I'm going to begin here at the lab's homepage. I'm going to go over to the left under Course Tools and find the Online Labs link and click here. Then under Online Labs, we're going to go down to lab number 8, right here. This is our final lab. Click this link. That'll take us to the Toolwire Live Labs page. I'm going to scroll down, and this lab access link, if we click it, should take us to this workstation here. And for this lab, we're going to be using Firefox. So let's, um, whoops, let's go ahead and fire up Mozilla Firefox. And we're going to change the URL, so we need to click here. And then we need to type in the IP address, and that is 127.0.0.1 colon 8000. Let's get that in there and type and hit enter. And come to the Splunk login page. Let's go ahead and log in with the credentials that are in the, ad, in the guide. If it prompts you for a password, go ahead and change it like the guide says. If not, go ahead and move on to the next step. And it didn't prompt me, so I'm going to move on to the next step here, which is go to the Splunk Home tab. So let's go up to the Home tab and click on that. And then we need to go down to Getting Started. So click this link right here. And once here, the guide wants you to take the time to go through the different tabs and see the information that's provided on all of these pages, uh, what, the, what this tool can do for you. And it's got a lot of uh, uh, great tools and a lot of great information. Under Monitor and Alert, you want to go to space special attention to set up an alert because you may need that um, as part of the, the turn-in information uh, for, the, for the class. So we can click on uh, all these different different ones. Then when you're done here, go ahead and up to the top, you'll see Manager link here. So click here. And this brings you to the Splunk Manager uh, interface. And the first thing we want to do now is we want to go down to Data Inputs. So let's find the link down here at the bottom under Data is Data Inputs. So let's click here. And then we want to add data. So click um, Add Data. There we go. And at the bottom, you want to find from a TCP port right here. And we're going to go ahead and type in 22 here for TCP port. And then we're going to select no restrict to one host. So let's click here. And then for the host restriction, we're going to go ahead and type in the IP address, which is 172.30.0.2. And then we need to go down under source type. So let's scroll down here. And for set source type, we're going to pick manual. And then we're going to type in for source type, and we're going to type in tcp-raw. And then check the box for more settings. And scroll down, let me scroll down here. And we're just going to select IP right here. And then we just need to click on the, the save button. So go ahead and click save. Click save again here. There we go. OK, so success. When you've got the success page, go ahead and click data imports right here. And scroll down, go right to TCP, click here. And this will actually show us what we just created, right? So we just created this input, and there's the IP address that we used. Here's the info. So let's uh, go back to the manager page. You can click up here. It's one of the ways. And let's go now over to searches and reports, which is the first one here under knowledge. So let's click this link right here. And now, from this drop-down list for app context, we want to pick search. So let's select search. And then at the bottom, you'll find top five source types. So we'll click here just to see what it does. So see the search string right here? This is important. So uh, keep an eye on this for your, your turn-in information as you go through the, the end of the, the lab guide here. Let's cancel. We're going to go over to the run link here, and that will actually run that. So click here. And here's your output. So we can scroll down and look at the different uh, bits of information that are provided from uh, that particular one. And this is in the table layout right now. So you can select at the end here, chart. If you click here, it will actually produce a chart for you. You can scroll down and see that chart. And we're going to format the chart a little bit here. So let's go to uh, formatting options, which is right above the chart here. 
Let's click this. And then we're going to, let's give it a title. So it's, um, let's call it uh, Lab 8 Top 5 Source Types. All right, and you'll see it uh, actually label as we as I click out of the box here. So there you go. And then um, let's change where the legend is at. Right now it's on the right. Let's make it at the bottom. So click bottom, and then scroll down, and you'll see that the legend now is is at the bottom right here. Okay. All right. So now let's click back to the different types. You have the table type, and here's a actually complete listing. So there we go. You'll see it's many pages. But we need to export this information for turn in. So let's go to exports, click here. And let's give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, Lab 8 Top 5 Source Types. And it, we want it to be a CSV file. There's other formats uh, here for you to choose from. But uh, CSV is what we need to turn in. Unlimited is fine. So let's just click export. And then let's just save the file. And then double click on it when the download things come up so you can actually see what it looks like in the in this text editor here. And this is Notepad. And now that we have it in this format, we're going to go ahead and save it somewhere else. So let's go to File and Save As. And we're going to pick Desktop. And then just hit Save. And now all you need to do is download that so you can click the File Transfer link. So we can click that and file transfer would load, download it, and then send it in the structure uh, to the instructor. Well, I hope that tutorial was helpful. It's the final installment in the series, so that completes this series of tutorials. If you'd like to leave any comments or suggestions, or if you'd like to see any other tutorials made, please leave a comment or send an email to charlie.tutorials at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.